Lisbon. But if South Africa can, can get some of those low hanging reforms in the ports and the rail correct, that'll help to facilitate some of the pressure on supply chains and in turn lessen the pressure on consumers. What are the risks for South Africa arising from the global supply chain crisis? This is a question that we at the Center for Risk Analysis considered in a recent client webinar held exclusively for clients of the CRA. What follows is a short extract from our longer webinar featuring Chris Hutting, Senior Analyst at the CRA. Enjoy. So just as a, as a quick broad overview, um, global supply chains, of course, very important for economic growth and economic activity. We've seen a lot of um, upheaval the last two years because of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, also other events uh, around the world, unfortunately, um, impacting on, on companies' ability to move their goods via containers and container ships. So if you look at um, September, no, uh, September, October, no, November 2019, on the right-hand side, a sharp increase in pressures on global supply chains because of COVID-19. Then countries got a bit of a handle on the pandemic, vaccinated a bit more, and then pressure increased once more, largely because of stricter lockdowns in China, as well as, again, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, when supply chains become more sticky, as I've, as I've mentioned a few times now, it simply means that things take longer to move around the world on container ships, ports become clogged up, railways perhaps can't handle things as well, even trucks, uh, trucking companies struggle to keep up with demand and it takes a, a quite a while to work through those sticking points and to resolve those issue, issues which result in delays of delivery of consumer goods materials but also just higher prices uh, companies have to pay more when their goods take longer to get through ports as as do container companies um, the sell themselves the ultimate effect of higher pressure on global supply chains is that consumers suffer um, higher prices and possibly shortages. So one shouldn't be surprised to hear reports of, of shortages of various items, um, goods, materials around the world at different stages. The, the sooner that countries can maybe modernize their port operations, uh, the better. To, to talk about ports specifically, uh, we have the recent release of the World Bank's container port performance index. And for South Africa, Cape Town ranked at three, 365th and Durban at 364th out of 370 facilities. So big room for improvement there, I think, would be an understatement. But if South Africa can get some of those low-hanging reforms in the ports and the rail correct, that'll help to facilitate some of the pressure on supply chains and in turn lessen the pressure on consumers. And now we'll just focus on a final summation of what we've talked about today. So the key risks in the trade space, uh, South Africa simply cannot ride on its luck forever. The global commodities boom will likely eventually end. Or, uh, and if it doesn't, there's a chance that other companies and other countries are going to shift to places where they can, good, they can get their materials easier than they can get here in South Africa. So we need to get the policies and the, the basic low-hanging fruit right now and not just count on luck being forever in our favor. Otherwise, we're not going to see the consequent growth and job creation that the country needs. South Africa's exports and capacities have slowly declined, again, focusing on the ports and rail and just our general ability to export goods. Um, that has unfortunately dec declined because of the wrong policy choices. We now have at least notes coming from government that reform is coming and reform is happening with rail for example we have the promise of 16 slots being opened up for private bidders to bid for that but the issue there is for example that transnet is going to retain custodianship over infrastructure and it'll only be for a period of two years so that likely discourages serious investment the the, the whole period needs to be much longer to facilitate and, and encourage companies to take on that risk. I don't think anyone's going to outlay that kind of capital if they know that their investment and upgrading of infrastructure could be taken away at any point and after two years. In terms of broad policies on the table, we have localization master plans. Uh, these represent a big risk to South Africa's exporting as well as importing capacity. Um, localization can also lead to subsidies for local businesses and champions 
So it might result in some short-term job creation for some um, designated businesses, but ultimately you're going to bring about a more brittle um, local economy because those companies who receive subsidies are going to be protected from global competition. So they won't respond as, as well as they would have in absent those subsidies. And again, that leads to a more brittle economy going forward. I wouldn't say that localization is the best way to achieve real sustainable establishment of value chains across sub-Saharan Africa, unfortunately. And then just another policy point, we have a new draft document from the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, uh, which aims to give manufacturers full-on anti-dumping duties against any product that they that they that they feel is a competition to them in terms of imports, but this will be in return for promises that the companies concerned will increase and protect jobs and not raise prices faster than the prevailing rate of inflation. And I think this is quite an artificial way to try and uh, stimulate local production and protection, but ultimately. It's going to protect companies from, from real world supply and demand and price pressures and therefore mean that they don't grow and respond as well as they should have and in turn passing on higher costs to consumers. We look at South Africa's collapsing infrastructure issues, of course, with energy um, and water. I mean, on the energy point, I would highly recommend listening to David and Sara's interview with ESCOM CEO Andre de Reiter, who highlights the issues at the state-owned electricity company. But here again, we, we mentioned the ports and the rail and how there's real low hanging fruit there in terms of reforming things and turning things around. If we can get those basics right, we'll see a lot more benefits for South African exporting companies, everyone from farmers to citrus to uh, mining, all of that will benefit if we just get the basics right, instead of focusing perhaps on something um, as a sort of high level as localization. And then lastly, South Africa remains important for the African continent as a whole, for countries around us, for economic growth and job creation, but that won't be the case forever. I don't think it should be a given. We shouldn't assume South Africa's status will always be as big and strong as it has been, and especially not if we don't make the correct policy choices. Thanks for watching. If you would like to access the full recording of this exclusive client webinar, you can do so by one of two ways. The first is becoming a member of the channel for under 100 Rand per month. The second is by becoming a client of the CRA. You can join us on our individual subscription category. That's 290 Rand per month. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.